Let's perform the vaginal hysterectomy which is the natural route for the hysterectomy. It's a scarless surgery and you will see all the steps in a crisp and a clear manner. So without wasting your time, so let's start the procedure. Well today we are going to perform the vaginal hysterectomy and first of all you will see that after the hydro dissection we will hold the cervix with the help of the LS forcep and now we are giving the circumferential incision over the cervix and after that we will give the vertical incision on the anterior aspect and after that we will dissect the bladder we should promote and propagate the vaginal hysterectomy and which is the indigenous surgery natural surgery we should upgrade our skills to do the vaginal hysterectomy as it's the scarless previously the 80 percent of the hysterectomies they were abdominal now there are more incidents to do the vaginal hysterectomy which is a good aspect in the part of the society it's the choice Gynecologists, they have uh, started to believe that every uterus, it can be and should be removed vaginally unless the root is contraindicated. Now, if the cervix is accessible and the mobility is there, then the vaginal hysterectomy should be thought of and now we say trial of vaginal. If not, then you can always convert to the other route. I must tell you that why vaginal hysterectomy is more favored. Uh, first is that it's the natural entrance and the secondly direct approach to the cervix and the uterus is there and the indications they are increasing more gynae are adopting public awareness is also increasing and there is the more demand for the stitchless surgery now you are seeing on the screen that we are making the space between the vaginal wall and the bladder after that we make vertical incision over the vaginal wall and we will separate the bladder just below the vaginal wall there is bladder and just below the bladder there is uterus in this uh, case of vaginal hysterectomy you must have the diverse knowledge of anatomy and there are many advantages to do the vaginal hysterectomy as there is no need of the costly equipments there is rapid recovery and you perform only you can do it only in the regional anesthesia and there is the shorter hospital stay there are less anesthetic complications and there is the learning curve is very short and no iatrogenic complications are there if you are doing with sound knowledge and sound skills and the non-availability or the non-accessibility of the laparoscopic or the laparoscopists in 80% of the world population makes the vaginal hysterectomy a popular choice. And in the resource-constrained country like in Pakistan, we cannot rely on the costly based surgeries. And the vaginal route, it is the least invasive, most safe and the clomping form amongst the available routes and techniques of the hysterectomy. Meanwhile, we are performing this procedure. I must tell you about the indications of the hysterectomy. Definitely in 30% of cases, fibroids, it's the indication. And endometriosis, uterine prolapse, CA cervix, uterus, and the ovaries, and the vaginal bleeding. And finally, if there is uncontrolled PPH, then you must proceed to the hysterectomy. And other indications are also there like uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, severe pelvic adhesions, bilateral ovarian pathology, adenomyosis, pelvic congestion syndrome, intractable re recurrent dysmenorrhea or the metrorrhagia, uterine anomalies, recurrent intrauterine polyps, uterine perforation, mentally retarded patient with no hygienic control and pregnancy in case placentic increta percreta or accreta atonic uterus uterine perforation and the ruptured uterus meanwhile we have discussed about the indications and now you are seeing on the screen that with the help of the sharp blade and with the help of the ls we have pushed the vaginal wall and now we are dissecting the bladder 
ऑफ द वे जनरल वॉल एंड इन अ वेरी प्रिसाइज वे एंड इन अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल वे इनिशियली वी हैव डन द हाइड्रोडाइजेशन दैट हाइड्रोडाइजेशन इट इज हेल्पिंग अस टू डाइसेक्ट द ब्लेडर इन अ वेरी क्रिस्प एंड अ क्लियर वे नाउ यू आर सींग दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द कॉटरी यूजिंग इट्स कोगुलेशन मोड we are securing the bleeding we are taking care of the hemostasis and with the help of the sponge with the help of the blunt dissection we are separating the bladder from the vaginal wall and this step is very crucial and unfortunately sometimes if you damage the bladder there is comorbidity and due comorbidity for the patient so you must be conscious at that step and dissect the bladder in a very precise and the crisp manner meanwhile uh, we are performing the vaginal hysterectomy i must discuss about that uh, there are other routes for the hysterectomy are also like abdominal hysterectomy and uh, further abdominal hysterectomy is divided into two categories one is the total abdominal hysterectomy and other is sub total abdominal hysterectomy then uh, over this procedure that's the vaginal hysterectomy it is also categorized further into two categories one is the total vaginal hysterectomy and other is total laparoscopic hysterectomy and third type is also there and that's the laparoscopically assisted vaginal hysterectomy then uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy and the cesarean hysterectomy is also there so here the question arises which route is best so i will discuss one by one in different aspects so first of all abdominal hysterectomy it results in the greater mean blood loss has the highest incidence of the febrile uh, morbidity and the abdominal wound infection obviously it will happen and the longest hospitalization and it is the type of the hysterectomy which is slowest to recover then vaginal hysterectomy which we are performing in this case it's the preferred route when technically possible because it's a scarless surgery it's more feasible and then you have got the laparoscopic hysterectomy the thing uh, which i must stress in this case it requires training and the equipment longest operating time is there but the shortest hospitalization and the recovery time is there but has the greatest overall risk of the complications and there is debate about its cost effectiveness especially in our country like uh, pakistan cost effectiveness you must uh, consider it into your preferences because our most of the patients they are uh, non affording they want the cheap surgery they want the affordable surgery so meanwhile i am discussing all the aspects and coming to the topic coming to our uh, screen coming to our uh, procedure till now we are dissecting the bladder from the vaginal wall with the help of the sharp blade with the help of the ls we have pushed the vaginal wall and with the help of the bladder we are dissecting it again and uh, till now uh, i was discussing about the choice of the root and there are factors that suggest that the abdominal root may be the preferred and what are that factors first is the significant uterine enlargement or the fixity then you will opt for the abdominal root you will not opt for the vaginal root and if there is inadequate transvaginal access if there is adnexal pathology or the fixation and if there is obliteration of the pouch of douglas like in case of endometriosis so we will not opt for the vaginal hysterectomy we will opt for the abdominal hysterectomy and you must have the knowledge for the types of hysterectomy like uh, i was talking previously that subtotal hysterectomy is also there in which case you remove only uterine body and in case of total hysterectomy you remove the uterine body and the cervix you will not remove the ovaries and that's the different aspect and in case of hysterectomy with bso means bilateral salpingo oophorectomy you did the hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy and last but not the least uh, that's the radical hysterectomy or the vertheme hysterectomy uh, you do the total hysterectomy with pelvic lymph nodes also 
which are the paracervical tissue and the upper one third of vagina it is also removed then it will be known as the radical hysterectomy so i have till now i have discussed about the different types of the hysterectomies and in a simplified way we have also divided this classification like partial hysterectomy total hysterectomy radical hysterectomy so these three categories i must explain first is the partial hysterectomy in which you remove the two third of the uterus in total hysterectomy you remove the uterus as well as the cervix and in case of radical hysterectomy you remove the uterus you remove vagina you remove cervix you remove all the three things in case of radical hysterectomy till now we have dissected most of the bladder from the vaginal wall in a very crisp and a clear way in a very precise way and you are seeing that we are using the blunt dissection now with the help of the gauze or with the help of the sponge after that anterior colpotomy we will do posterior colpotomy we will do posteriorly we will enter into the pouch of douglas and after that we will put the uterus on our finger we will enter into the peritoneal cavity after that we will remove and we will show you all the steps so as uh, we are performing the vaginal hysterectomy i must discuss more about the vaginal hysterectomy as compared to the other types of the hysterectomy so in which the uterus is removed uh, through the vagina it is the less invasive than the abdominal hysterectomy in cn site at inner vagina and the hospital stays only 1 to 2 3 days only and the recovery time it's 4 to 6 weeks only and cervix cannot be preserved here well most of the dissection of the bladder it is almost complete and we are towards the end of dissection of the bladder part of our vaginal hysterectomy and we are now separating the rectum from the posterior wall of the vagina now you are clearly seeing that we are doing in a very precise way and after that we will remove the cervix after entering into the pouch of douglas in the posteriorly that's the posterior colpotomy part of our operation and there are well defined indications for the vaginal hysterectomy like there are some cases of uterine prolapse like in our case and some cases of the dysfunctional uterine bleeding and the some can cancer body Uh, you must give the prophylactic antibiotic agent uh, almost 30 minutes prior to the first incision for the vaginal hysterectomy well now you are seeing that uh, we have entered into the pouch of douglas we have done the posterior colpotomy part of our operation and we can put our finger into that pouch easily after that we will approach on the anterior side and then uh, we can also enter into the anterior surface while holding the uterus on our finger after the after this step we will remove the cervix in the circumferential manner yes we will remove it well i was talking about the choice of the antibiotic that's the you can give cefazolin cefoxitin cefuroxime you can give metronidazole 500 mg iv it may be used uh, when there is cef uh, cephalosporin allergies are there now you are seeing on the screen clearly that we are removing the cervix with the help of the cautery using its coagulation mode we are removing the cervix circumferentially and the patient uh, position for the vaginal hysterectomy it should be the dorsal lithotomy and the by manual pelvic examination is performed you can assess the uterine mobility and the descent you can confirm that no unsuspected or inexcel pathology is found and the bladder catheter must be inserted uh, some surgeons they believe that the distended bladder helps with the recognition of the bladder injury and the they don't use a catheter but in this case i always use the catheter meanwhile we are removing the cervix and now 
we are very close to removal of our cervix and there are well defined uh, advantages of the vaginal hysterectomy and there is absence of the abdominal scar there is a low incidence of the intestinal complications and associated genital prolapse can be treated at the same time well cervix is almost removed you are seeing clearly on the screen there are also disadvantages of the vaginal hysterectomy it is unsafe and difficult in the presence of the pelvic adhesions the ovaries cannot be removed in some cases it cannot be done if the size of the uterus is larger than the 14 weeks pregnant uterus in that case you will convert to the abdominal hysterectomy you will convert into the other routes well now you are seeing on the screen that we are clamping cutting and ligating the uterosacral ligament which contains the connective tissue as well as some of the blood vessels are also there and after that we will put our finger into the pouch of douglas and we will enter into the anterior aspect after doing the anterior colpotomy part of our operation meanwhile we are performing this procedure i must discuss uh, some aspects of the laparoscopic hysterectomy also in this case uterus is removed in sections through the small incision using the laparoscope and there is hospital stay of 1 to 2 3 days and recovery time it is 4 to 6 weeks there is a longer duration of the procedure and it requires the greater surgical expertise UTI it's the most likely and the few abdominal wall infections are there and the less blood loss is there and there is also the advanced type of hysterectomy which is the robotics hysterectomy and uh, there is the greater articulation it eliminates the hand tremors and there is increased accuracy and the precision now you are seeing that uh, we have put our finger from the pouch of douglas and now we have entered from the anterior and uterus uterine body it's on our it's on our finger now with the help of the ls forcep we are holding the uterus after that we will clamp cut and ligate different pedicles first the uterosacral ligament then we will cut we will first of all we will clamp then cut and ligate the uterine artery and after that we will remove the uterus like every procedure it has got uh, different risk and the side effects likewise after the hysterectomy there is the early onset of the menopause and there is the greater risk of the cardiovascular diseases there is increased chance of the osteoporosis and the bone fractures there is chance of uncontrolled urination and reduced libido it is also reported and the vaginal dryness it is also reported in some cases after the hysterectomy most women don't need pap smears except those who had the previous cervical intrathelial neoplasia of more than 2 cm ca cervix or the ca corpus uterus and the estrogen only hormone replacement therapy is an option except when bilateral salpingo oophorectomy was performed for estrogen responsive cancer or the severe endometriosis symptoms control in these patients can be real problem and the current uh, research uh, suggests that estrogen replacement therapy has many benefits and the few risks in the post operatively you will assess for the signs of the hemorrhage hemorrhage is more common after the vaginal hysterectomy than after the abdominal hysterectomy you will monitor the vital signs every 4 hourly auscultate lungs every shift and uh, measure intake and the output once the catheter has been removed measure the amount of the urine voided assess for the complications like infection ileus shock hemorrhage thrombophlebitis and the pulmonary embolus you will assess the vaginal discharge instruct the women in perineal care assess incision and the bowel sounds every shift you will encourage the patient turning 
coughing, deep breathing and early ambulation and you will encourage the fluid intake also. Meanwhile, we are very close to the removal of uterus and you are clearly depicting each and every step on the screen. Now, we are clamping, cutting and ligating the uterine artery on both the sides of the uterus. And one thing at this point I must tell you that your knot should be reef knot or the skier knot. Otherwise ligature slip might occur and the bleeding will occur and it will retract into the abdomen and after that there is havoc for you. Then only control you will control the bleeding uh, by performing the laparotomy and that's the devastating thing. So take care of this. In some cases of the hysterectomy, we remove the bilateral fallopian tubes and the ovaries also. That's the bilateral salpingophorectomy. But in some cases, we don't remove that. We remove only uterus and the cervix. After the removal of the uterus, you will see on the screen that we will take the circumferential stitch around the inner wall of the vagina and we will push the bladder back so it will not pout and after that we will cut the extra part of the vagina we will recover it we will repair it and finally at the end we will make the t-shaped stitches and all the steps they will be clearly depicted on the screen you will appreciate each and every step now you are seeing that we are clamping, cutting and ligating the uterine artery on the other side also. Now finally, meanwhile we are performing the procedure. I must tell you that there are uh, many controversies about the hysterectomy. All the medical conditions, they have more than one option for the treatment. Uh, so, I am raising uh, four questions there. And I will give the logic in the favor and the in the disfavor of all these conditions. First question is to remove or not to remove the uterus. The second question it will be to remove or not to remove the normal cervix. And the third question will be to remove or not to remove the normal ovaries. And finally the last question will be to do it laparoscopic, vaginal or the abdominal. First uh, to remove the uterus. Instruct me it's the surgical removal of all are part of the uterus and hysterectomy it's the most frequently performed of all surgical operations and there are reasons why hysterectomies may be recommended fall into three categories first to save the lives second to correct serious problems that interfere with the normal function and third to improve the quality of the life and in the favor of do not remove the uterus you will remove the disease not remove the organ and there are alternatives to the hysterectomy also uterus it's not argon to discard after the woman complete her family it is not the foreign body after the woman complete her family and there are alternatives and like laparoscopic uterine artery ligation uterine artery embolization hormone levonorgestrel iud and the medical treatment options are also there like progesterone antagonist mefiprestone endometrial ablation is the option trans cervical resection of the endometrium is the option and the myolysis is the destruction of the fibroids like the necrosis by different methods you can do the thermal ablation and the hysteroscopic laparoscopic of the abdominal myomectomy also and the second question to remove or not to remove the normal ovary and the prophylactic oophorectomy remains a controversial issue among the gynecological surgeons. And first, to remove the normal ovary. Female castration. The main reason to remove the normal ovaries is the prevention of ovarian cancer. The probability of the developing ovarian cancer in the lifetime is approximately 1 in 70. Disease is almost uniformly fatal except for early stage disease which unfortunate it is not common. It decreases the residual ovarian syndrome. 
एंड द लॉजिक्स टू नॉट रिमूव द नॉर्मल ओवरी ओवरीज नॉट डाई टिल वेमन डाइट क्रिएट होम दैट अपोज बेनिफिट ऑफ द कैंसर ओवरी द मेन रीजन नॉट टू रिमूव द नॉर्मल ओवरीज आर दैट इट विल कॉज एक्यूट मेनोपॉज इन द प्री मेनोपॉजल वेमन एंड दैट द ओवरी एट ऑल द स्टेजेज ऑफ द वेमन लाइफ प्रोड्यूस मैनी पोअरली अंडरस्टूड हारमोन्स विच मे हेल्प समन फील बेटर एंड विच के नॉट ऑलवेज बी रिप्लेसड मोस्ट ऑफ द गनेकोलॉजिस्ट वुड नॉट रिकमेंड द रोटीन रिमूवल ऑफ द ओवरीज इन द वेमेन अंडर द एज ऑफ फोर्टी टू फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स now you are seeing on the screen that we have removed the uterus with the cervix and it is the total vaginal hysterectomy with the removal of the cervix also after that you will see that we will tie these pedicles together and they will form the bridge and they will prevent the wall to prolapse afterward and after that you will see that we will uh, take the circumferential stitch on the inner wall of the vagina and after that we will tie it and then there will be remaining of the extra vaginal mucosa extra vaginal wall which we will cut and after cutting the vaginal wall we will again stitch the remainder of the portion and you will see that our final incision final shape will be t shaped and all the steps we are performing Uh, so that the wall prolapse will not occur well the third question was to remove or not to remove the normal cervix first to remove the normal cervix it is done by the senior as well experienced uh, knowledge doctors in well equipped public hospital it decreases the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or the cancer cervix stump and don't remove the normal cervix it is followed by the better sexual life bladder function rectal function it is easier it reduces the operating time shorter hospital uh, recovery time and the less operative complications are there injury to the bladder ureter colon it is prevented and the less post operative complications are there so finally conclusion of the day is Each case is different and the scene is difficult. Doctor must share the scene with her patient and her family. Every step should be offered as an option to the selected patients. The scene is based on guidelines rather than the physician's preferences or the experience. And the final decision it should be made by the woman herself based on her age, her options and the severity of her symptoms. Well, we are towards the end of our operation and you are seeing that we have pushed the bladder on the inner side and finally we have cut the extra vaginal wall and finally we are repairing it and we will repair it it will form the shape of t that the pressure will be distributed and it will prevent from the world prolapse thereafter till now if you have learned something from this video then do support this channel do subscribe this channel and share this channel for the betterment of the doctor for the transferring of the knowledge now finally we have completed our procedure of the vaginal hysterectomy in a very precise and a very crisp manner So finally if you have learned something from our video then do subscribe this channel like share and comment and you can give your precious feedback to us also so thank you so much for watching for this time thank you so much if you like our content if you learned something from our videos then do subscribe by clicking on the red button below so thank you so much